Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Barnabas Episcopal Church. You can find the bulletin for our service in the description below. You can also join us on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please join me in praying the psalm in unison. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Knit my heart to you, that I may fear your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. The arrogant rise up against me, O God and a band of violent men seeks my life. They have not set you before their eyes, but you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them all tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witness. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you not want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The seeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of, e of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God of all grace and tender, fierce mercy, I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your Spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to you. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. So this morning we have the parable of the weeds. Perhaps one of the most sort of slap-in-your-face parables of Jesus. And, and like many of Jesus' parables and wisdom teaching, teachings, the intention is to be like a splash of cold water in the face. So, and like many of his parables, even when he explains them, they, they he leaves so many questions unanswered. In this particular parable, I mean, the, the giant question is, am I the wheat or am I a weed? And if I'm a weed, can I become wheat? And if I'm wheat, can I become a weed? Jesus, wait a minute. How do I know? It begs the question. And, and if we pull out just a little bit from this parable we realize we're in the parable's discourse in Matthew's Gospel. Remember, there's five discourses in Matthew's Gospel. This is the parable's discourse, eight parables in this one section. The parable of the sower, the parable of the weeds, the parable of the dragnet, the pearl of great price, the mustard seed, the leaven, the treasure hidden in the field, and treasures new and old that a wise scribe pulls out of their treasure chest. And so, all these parables in one section, and essentially all of them have a surprise 
ending, and all of them leave more questions unanswered than they answer. All of them. So even in this parable that Jesus explains, as I've already commented, it leaves so much unanswered. So the beginning parable in the section, the parable of the sower, which I and many others think is a parable about parables. Remember the parable of the sower? The seed falls on the, on the, on the hard pan ground or the rocky ground or the ground in the thorns or the good ground. It too, it leaves so many questions unanswered. Again, it's, well, which ground am I? And if I'm the, if I'm the thorny ground, can I become good ground? If I'm the hard pan ground, can I become good ground? If I'm good ground, can I become hard pan? None of those questions are answered. And so, it begs, what's really the message? What what is it that Matthew intends in putting all these parables together in one section? And for centuries, the church has had what we would call metaphorical or allegorical interpretations of these parables and the whole section. Interestingly, also, in the parable of the weeds, the way that the parable is told, it, the farming is all wrong. So when the servants come to the landowner and say, do you want us to go ahead and, and, and weed out the weeds? The landowner says, no, but that was the common practice farming of the day. And in an agrarian culture, all of Jesus' hearers, all of Matthew's readers would have understood that, wait a minute, the servants are tending the field properly. So why do it poorly or why do it wrongly? And even at the end, if, if you had tended the field properly and weeded out the weeds, then at the end, the few weeds that were left, you wouldn't have gathered those first. You would have gathered the wheat and left the weeds behind. Again, so all of that begs uh, allegorical or metaphorical interpretation. It begs that there's more than just the surface. Now, I want to go to that, but before I do, I want to say, I think it's really important that part of the heart of this chapter, and certainly this parable, is the concept of judgment. And I think it's important that we not, we not pass that by. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to preach about judgment this morning. I want to say that life constantly holds us accountable for our actions. Constantly, life holds us accountable. So in a sense, judgment is always happening. So I just want us to be with that a moment and to realize that however we might hear the message, never is it absent accountability. So, there is an easily overlooked thing that happens in this parable, and it happens in the parable of the sower as well. Jesus explains the parable of the sower, and he explains the parable of the weeds, and in both cases, he explains it only to his disciples. Notice at the beginning of verse 36, Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And he's just with his disciples. A similar thing happened in the explanation of the parable of the sower. And in that explanation, Jesus says, to you has been granted the mysteries of the kingdom. But to those who are outside, they are left not hearing not understanding, not seeing. And he goes on to quote the prophet, they'll see and not see, they'll hear and not hear. They will not have understanding. Their hearts are hardened. But to you, to you has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And the sages and the prophets of old longed to be where you sit, hearing the answer to the mysteries of the kingdom. However, <laughs> twice in this chapter, Jesus asks them if they understand. They say yes. I think they understand nothing. The whole Gospel of Matthew, they never understand. 
Jesus might be revealing the secrets of the kingdom, but they don't seem to get it except for one thing. One thing. And it is the essential good news in Matthew's story. And it is the essential good news that I want you to hear this morning. There is a secret in this chapter, and it is simply this. Those that come to Jesus have the secrets revealed. Those that are willing to come to Jesus, seek Him out, search Him out, find Him and be with Him, discover the God who has come to be with them. Perhaps the overarching theme of Matthew's Gospel, Emmanuel, God with us, and at the end Jesus saying, remember I am with you always. And so what happens is, Jesus for us, the one true teacher invites us, welcomes us to come be with him. And when we discover him, when we're in his presence, and when he touches us, all anxiety, all fear, all the distress is dispelled in a heartbeat when Jesus touches us. It's in Matthew that Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me. It's in Matthew's Gospel that there's the emphasis of Jesus at dinner with the sinners and the tax collectors. I know you've heard me preach it. We've had that text. I want you not to forget it. Jesus invites you to join Him at the table. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever has happened in your life, Jesus came for you and invites you to come. And when you meet Him, the secrets of the kingdom are revealed to you. The secret that you are God's beloved. The secret that you are forgiven, that grace upon grace and mercy upon mercy is for you. That the way of God, the way of Jesus, is the way of love. A love that has a welcome without limit. You are invited to be with Jesus at the table. And by the way, by the way, count yourself among the sinners. Count yourself among the sick. Jesus said, it's the sick that need a physician. Those are the ones I came for. Count yourself among those that need the physician and that need the healer and that need the one teacher to reveal the secrets of the kingdom of God. It is the heart of Matthew's Gospel. In Jesus, the kingdom of God is present. In Jesus, God is present. And Jesus invites us to come and be with Him. And there is no other formula. I mean, we can have all kinds of theology and all kinds of ideas. There is no other formula. It is come to be with Jesus there, the love of God welcomes us, touches us, and begins to dispel all the pain and the darkness and the anxiety. And it's a daily practice. Actually, it's an hour by hour. Actually, for me, it's a moment by moment. It's a breath by breath practice of returning to Jesus returning from the distress and the anxiety and the fear and the uncertainty and the loss and the burden with every breath to return, to let it go, let it all go, and return to the one who welcomes me. And perhaps there's just one more question. Perhaps one more question. 
Am I willing to welcome the other? Even as I so desperately need Jesus to welcome me, and even as I experience His welcome, am I prepared to welcome the other, the other who thinks differently than me? The other who has a whole different view of the world than me? The other who has a different experience to me. The other whose pain is different from mine. But nonetheless, it is a deep and real pain. Am I ready to make space for them and their pain the way Jesus had made space for me in my pain? Am I prepared? Am I prepared to be Jesus' disciple with a boundless welcome, a love for the other, a love for the sinner like me. Hear it, hear it deeply. I am one of the least of these. That one is one of the least of these in whom when we are welcomed, Jesus is welcome. Am I prepared to be Jesus' disciple? To come to him, to be brought to peace day by day, moment by moment, and then to welcome the other on Jesus' behalf. It is good news. It is a good news that has no end. It is a good news that is nothing but light and love and life. In Jesus, experience God's kiss on your soul. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, particularly Donald, our president, and Doug, our governor. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially for our nation and our world in this time of great pain and turmoil, for healthcare professionals, essential workers, and all who have fallen sick from COVID-19, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, 
for the peace and unity of the church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our indigenous neighbors, may we live together in respectful harmony. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in God's church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. To you, O Lord our God, amen. Please join me in the prayer for the power of the Spirit among the people of God. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Amen.
Good morning. My name is Jim Clark, and it's my pleasure and my privilege to welcome you to our online worship service this morning. I'd also like to say it's a joy for me to get to be seen by you, and it will be an even greater joy for me to get to see you. So immediately following the service this morning, we begin our Listening to Seek and Serve program. It's a Zoom program and scroll down just a little ways from this worship video and you'll find the link where you can join this program and also there's a link at the end of our worship bulletin. And I look forward to seeing you there. This is, I really do, this is our initial time to come together as the St. Barnabas community to, to listen to some stories from our African-American sisters and brothers, and to listen to one another, to listen to the St. Barnabas community, to listen, to learn, so that we can seek and serve Christ in all persons. And in this opening session, I'm going to have a lot to say about how we frame this up and how we can do this and, and uh, provide the, the setting in which we can all feel safe to, to tell our stories and our experiences and respond, really, to what we're hearing. And our, our St. Barnabas friend, Tom Shank, who's been a part of our listening initiative for three years and, and our vestry consultant for, for many years, Tom defines engagement this way. Engagement is initiative plus curiosity times courage equals engagement. And so, let's take the initiative, let's be genuinely curious, really to hear, really to listen to the stories of our 
African American sisters and brothers and let's, let's listen to one another and let's be courageous as the people of faith and hope rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Let's be courageous. Let's be courageous to listen. So I hope you'll join us. It's 1130 following the service this morning and I look forward with joy to seeing you there. Thank you. So we have a custom at St. Barnabas of praying with people who have birthdays or anniversaries or other special occasions in their lives. If that's you, I invite you to let me pray with you and bless you. And I'd like to invite all of our listeners to join us in a time of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on these your children as they begin another year and those that begin another year together. Grant that they might grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in you and your goodness now and all the days of their lives. And in these coming days, Lord Jesus, grant them grace to draw near to you to be touched by you and to experience the secret of secrets, that to be touched by you is to have their soul kissed by the divine. In your name we pray, amen. So I want to say a, a great big shout out to the saints of St. Barnabas for the wonderful generosity of the food drive in June. It's my understanding that we collected 1,897 pounds of clothes and 549 pounds of food for our mission partners. So this coming Saturday is our August, uh, or, I'm sorry, July food drive, and I want to encourage you to carry, continue. This will be our third food drive, and let's continue to to be generous to people who have great need. And this is, this is an opportunity for us to serve, the, the, um, serve through our mission partners. Now, a little word about the, the street situation. So it's just changing daily. And um, from, now, from now till the end of December, the city tells us we'll not be able to go north on Mockingbird Lane from Lincoln. So you can't you can't get to St. Barnabas from Lincoln coming up Mockingbird Lane. You have to come west or, or, or come to one of the, uh, uh, come to Mockingbird Lane further north. Now, sometimes I've been able to get to Mockingbird Lane coming west on Indian Bend, but today I wasn't able to do that. So things change, but one of the streets north of Indian Bend or north, you can uh, get to Mockingbird Lane and then come south to get to St. Barnabas. So, sorry if that's confusing. You can, I think you can Google it and uh, when you're ready to, to, to come, just understand you can't drive north on Mockingbird. You have to drive south to get to St. Barnabas. So, let's, let's have another terrific food drive in the month of July. In addition to 
our gratitude for your generous participation in the food drive, I want to thank you for your generous uh, support of St. Barnabas. It is, you just continue to be a generous people. I can't thank you enough. By the way, we're also continue to receive gifts to our Welcoming the Neighborhood Project, which again, you've, you've heard us talk about. We're hoping to begin construction sometime in the early fall uh, for the first phase of that. And I, I just, I can't thank you enough for your continued generosity to support us. And no, we're not together as St. Barnabas the way we were six months ago, but we're still St. Barnabas. And we're still finding ways to come together, just like in this online worship service, to be strengthened by our faith, to hear the gospel proclaimed, to encounter God in our worship together and and in our prayers and our various Zoom meetings and in things like the food drive. We continue to be the saints of St. Barnabas. We continue to be disciples who make disciples and who are sent into the world to carry on Jesus' work. So I just, I want to keep saying thank you because you keep being so generous. Thank you, thank you, and bless you. So let us, let us pause and, and each of us gather ourselves. Come home. Come home to yourself. Come home to the presence of Christ within. Let us afresh offer ourselves and the fruits of our life and labor to the God who is boundless presence, abiding in our innermost being. Amen. Amen. See you at the listening to Seek and Serve program in just a few moments. Thank you. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.